Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Let's Talk Lore, The Last Tyrant. This is episode 7. We'll be covering the Guangdong Coalition today. So first off, uh, the Guangdong Coalition, or what's known as the Guangdong Lianjun, is this famous coalition led by Yuan Shao that faced off against Dong Zhuo in the early periods of 190. And this coalition, uh, if we're going to talk about it, we have to both talk about its Romance of Three Kingdom version and its historical version. Now, before we jump into either versions, we have to first talk about the name, the Guangdong Coalition. Now, what does Guangdong actually mean? So if we break down the words, Guan in Guangdong means pass or gates, and Dong means east. So it's actually a location reference. It's a reference to the fact that all coalition members are from east of a certain pass. And the pass in discussion is a pass called Han Gu Guan. So here we have a map of the road from Chang'an to Luoyang. Now this is a very famous path linking the two capitals of the Western Han Dynasty and the Eastern Han Dynasty. And Han Gu Guan is a pass that is slightly west of Luoyang that blocks the way. So if you look on the map, you see these little red squares, and each of these squares uh, with names attached is a famous pass. And these paths are basically checkpoints, you know, defensive structures built between mountains to choke off roads. And they're very nice defensive positions, and Hangu Pass is a very famous one that was first built east of Chang'an during the Qin Dynasty, and later on rebuilt west of Luoyang, in the Han Dynasty. And this is the defensive structure where they used for the location reference where all the warlords of this coalition were east of this pass. And if you just take a moment to study the route a little bit, if you look at the mountain ranges on the map as well, you see that Chang'an and Luoyang has a valley basically that goes along the Yellow River with mountains both north of the Yellow River and south of the Yellow River. And it's a very defensive position, and this route can be easily defended. Kind of similarly to the game, the game does reflect this a little bit, where you have that long path under the river. Uh, the only exception in the game is that the river itself has no defensive value. But historically, it's very hard to move armies in the river. The Yellow River is not the calmest river in the world, and very, very wide. So if you want to move armies around, you're going to need a big navy, which many people don't have. So you have to rely on this path. So many of these choke points provide a huge defensive values. And the game has said that in the later DLC this year, they're going to introduce gate passes to the map. So hopefully we'll see some of these more famous ones added. Uh, one in particular is Tongguan, which doesn't have a red dot, but it's slightly east of Chang'an on the map. It's a little black rectangle. That's a very key pass that holds Chang'an. And later on, when we talk about Dong Zhuo's escape to the Chang'an to be the capital and burn down Luoyang, he basically could hold Tongguan and prevent this eastern coalition from ever entering Chang'an. As you can see, the mountain passes kind of prevent large movement of military men. So now that we got the name out of the way, let's first talk about the more famous Romance of the Three Kingdom version of this Guangdong Lianjun, which was introduced in the novel as Shibalu Lianjun, or the Coalition of 18 Warlords. And in the story of the novel, it was Cao Cao, who had escaped the capital following a failed assassination attempt on Dong Zhuo, who talked up his friend Yuan Shao into starting this coalition to rally the warlords of the east and the north into a coalition against Dong Zhuo. And the members of this coalition included the Nanyang administrator Yuan Shu, Ji province prefect Han Fu, Yu province prefect Kong Zhou, Yan province prefect Liu Dai, Henei administrator Wang Kuan, Chen Liu administrator Zhang Miao, Dong administrator Qiao Mao, Shenyang administrator Yuan Yi, Jibei chancellor Bao Xin, Beihai administrator Kong Rong, Guangling administrator Zhang Chao, Xu province prefect Tao Tian, Xiliang Administrator Ma Teng, Beiping Administrator Gong Sun Zan, Shangdan Administrator Zhang Yang, Changsha Administrator Sun Jian, Bohai Administrator Yuan Shao, 
And finally, civilian and the superstar of the Romance of Three Kingdom, Liu Bei. So, out of this list, there's a few things that's wrong right away. Because just common sense would tell you that some of these members cannot be in a coalition that's called Guangdong Coalition. Because Ma Teng is out west. So there's no way he could have been included in a coalition that is named East of Hangu Pass. So right off the mark, the author of the novel has a few things that's blatantly wrong. But because of the popularity of the novel, this list has kind of become canon. And we can kind of see where the game have placed many of these characters in the game based on this list. And many of the starting locations of the factions, whether they are playable or not, are really based on this list here. And we can kind of see where the game got all the location starts for the Rise of the Warlord and the 190 start, and even some of the location starts for the 182 start, where you have some minor characters like Yuan Yi with a faction in Chang'an, when in fact it was Yuan Wei, who was actually the Yuan clan family member in Chang'an. And also you can see some of the really minor characters being given administrative roles, when in fact they were prefects, which is kind of the supervisor and higher standing in terms of government structure. So if you see a province prefect, they're higher tier than a local administrator, but they had no firm military control. And as a matter of fact, uh, whether in the novel or in history, it says that each of these warlords brought around 10,000 to 30,000 men. And those men were basically private armies that they raised themselves. Uh, maybe some administrator had control of local forces, but definitely not in that size. And prefects themselves have no military control. So most of them had no men under them under a peaceful setting. And in the novel, we see this huge group, you know, gather up in one location, prop Yuan Shao to be the leader of the coalition and go off into attacking Sishui Guan where you had the famous scene of Guan Yu killing Hua Xiong, and then they march out toward Hu Lao Guan, where you have the famous scene of Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei fighting uh, Lui Bu. But in history, uh, none of this happened, and they didn't just all gather up in one place. And even if you think about logistically, how could Ma Teng come from the west to join up with them? How could like Gong Sun Zan coming up from all the way in the northeast, abandoning his defensive position against the nomads in the north, to come join them. I mean, a lot of these just didn't make a lot of sense. So what actually happened in history? So the event that triggered the formation of this coalition is actually by a man named Tel Mal, who we kind of talked about in our last episode as he forged a letter that he claimed was written by the Sangong or the Grand Excellency positions and the Grand Commandant positions asking the warlords to oust Dong Chuo. And he forged this letter and sent it out to a lot of administrators and high government officials in the Northeast and the Central Plains, asking for their help and rallying them. And one man that kind of answered his rally was Yuan Shao. And they together triggered this coalition that had 11 warlords in history. And if we take a look at the historical version of this coalition, what we see is that at the beginning, Yuan Shao, who was named the administrator of Bohai, but really didn't uh, go there on the job for very long. Uh, he basically recruited a private army and named himself the general of the cavalry and the chariot. And he was the leader of the coalition, as agreed by everyone else because of the status of the Yuan clan and the fact that Yuan Shao was seen as this mentee after He Jin and someone who avenged He Jin's death by killing the eunuchs. So his social standing among these powerful clan members and the scholars was very, very high as the savior of the country who killed all these eunuchs. And he's young, charismatic, did his Confucian duties by guarding the tomb of his parents. So a lot of things was in his favor. So he formed up with Henei's administrator Wang Kuan and Ji province governor Han Fu. The three of them stationed their troops in the north, north of the Yellow River, in Henei, in Wang Kuan's jurisdiction. And Han Fu stayed in the key city of Ye as the key logistic officer bringing in food and supplies. Now, governor is a very high position. It's even higher than prefect. They had firm control of both the civil and the administrative duty, and they had men. So he was kind of the guy who is the highest ranked and provided the most food. And someone who eventually 
would be scared that Yuan Shao becomes too strong. And then we've seen the 190 event where Yuan Shao and Gong Sunzan pretty much uh, attacks Han Fu together, forcing Han Fu to surrender to Yuan Shao. And that's what get Yuan Shao started by giving him full control of the Ji province as he continued to expand in the north. So that's the northern portion of the coalition. And then in the central plains, on the front line against Dong Zhuo, to the east of the capital, you had the Yu province prefect, Kong Zhou, Yan province prefect, Liu Dai, Chen Liu administrator, Zhang Miao, Guangling administrator, Zhang Chao, Dong administration, Qiao Mao, Shangyang administrator, Yuan Yi, and the Jibei chancellor, Bao Xin. And also in this group was Cao Cao, who didn't have any titles at the time, but had also raised sort of a private army and helped out in this area. And he had some friends in this group, like Zhang Miao, who was the Chen Liu administrator, who would eventually give the Chen Liu commandery over to Cao Cao to help Cao Cao get his start. Now, this group was on the front line, but mostly uh, they rallied with Yuan Shao, who was just north of the river. And they tend to just party all day. They have a lot of huge feasts. The only armed group in this force that went out to fight Dong Zhuo's men was Cao Cao, and he didn't have a lot of early success. Now, many of these guys are just scholars that didn't really have any capable fighting abilities, so don't blame them too much for not leading men out to fight. And they were also all worried, since their armies were private ones and belonged to each of them, that if they had gone to the front line and got wiped, they would lose influence in this group. As a matter of fact, Liu Dai and Tiao Mao got into a pretty big argument during this coalition period, and Liu Dai's men ended up killing Tiao Mao's men and took control of the Dong commandery. So it was not a super united coalition to begin with, and everyone had their own agendas, and no one wanted to be the first group to fight Dong Zhuo's men. And lastly, to the south of the capital, you had Yuan Shu, who gave himself the title of General of the Back. And he was kind of in charge of leading assault against the capital as well. And one of his generals, uh, very well known, Sun Jian, actually led many of the offensive maneuver that were successful against Dong Zhuo's men. And it was Sun Jian's attacks against Dong Zhuo and Lü Bu that kind of forced Dong Zhuo to rethink his strategy and retreat back to Chang'an because Sun Jian was beating them. But at this time, Sun Jian wasn't any big warlord or had any great influence. He was just a general serving under Yuan Shu. So that's kind of the three groups of the coalition. It was very threatening. Uh, if you just look at it on paper, you had the north, the east, and the south surrounding the capital, all with big forces gathering up to you know, threaten Dong Zhuo's forces. Even though no one dared to make the first move, it was still kind of a scary thought that Dong Zhuo had to process. Dong Zhuo's first step was to send many of the government officials to these groups to kind of persuade them to, you know, disband, go off on their peaceful ways. But Yuan Shao told everyone to kill off these mediators. And they sort of just, you know, told Dong Zhuo that we're here for blood. And Dong Zhuo tried to fight them off at that time. But after Lü Bu's army had a setback against Sun Jian's forces, Dong Zhuo pretty much made his mind that the best move is to move the emperor farther west toward his original source of power in the Liang province by moving the capital to Chang'an. So we're going to see that move uh, in our next episode as we have episode 8, uh, Retreat to Chang'an. So I hope you guys enjoy this one and see you all next time. Bye!